Good morning, everybody. How is everyone doing today? Back to Monday, and we are reading for the Gospel of John today. I'm Denise Pass with Seeing Deep Ministries, where we see deep in a shallow world and overcome the battles of the mind with the Word of God. So you guys, uh, what an interesting read this morning. Good morning, Diane. Thank you, friend, for being here. And so we're reading from the Gospel of John, and we open with one of my favorite stories about Nicodemus. We'll call him Nick, shall we? <laughs> and he comes to Jesus at night, and he tells him that he knows Jesus is from God because of the signs that he's doing. Then Jesus tells him he needs to be born again. Now, do y'all remember when, maybe the first time you heard those words, and maybe today, is the first time you're hearing those words. Nicodemus is kind of a little confused. How can I be born again? I love how he's asking though. He's not asking like he's doubting. He just doesn't get it. And I understand because I had a similar time in my life. I remember when I was 18 years old and I was working at Free State Mall in Bowie, Maryland at a clothing store and two men walked into the store and talked about being born again, that we need to be born again. And I remember having a resistance in my spirit. And the store owner said to me, do you believe all that stuff about being born again? And I said, no. <laughs> and then a few months later, I was sitting at University of Maryland in a room and this young man was talking with us about the need to be saved. And I slammed my hand down on the table and I called him a fanatic and walked out of the room. True story. But God is so merciful. It would be a year later from the time when those people said we must be born again and I was like, that just sounds weird, right? <laughs> that God would wake me up three mornings in a row to my radio alarm clock being switched to a Christian radio station and I would hear the gospel and I would hear that I'm not saved and that if you're not saved you're going to hell and in that moment God opened my heart and my, my eyes and I understood that I did need to be born again. You see, sometimes God knows what it takes for us to hear and to understand. And the gospel can offend, right? I think I was offended that someone would say I needed to be born again. I didn't even know what that meant. It sounded like a religious thing, you know? But God was merciful to me. The dialogue between Nick and Jesus is such a sweet example of honest questions from a seeker. Jesus shared how salvation comes through his son. Let's read a little bit of that from John 3, verses 14 through 17. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness. Okay, again, this sounds weird, right? <laughs> what is this with snakes? I don't know. So the son of man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Jesus was referencing Numbers 21 verse 9 and sharing how this was a foreshadowing of what Christ was going to do for God's people. It says, So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. <laughs> it just makes me laugh because I think sometimes in our sophistication and, you know, self-righteousness, we want to think that we can save ourselves. And we surely don't want to look at a snake on a pole, okay? That was God's people in the Old Testament. But there were snakes biting them and this was a way that they were healed. But it's an example of looking to God 
to save us. We can't save ourselves. And Jesus is saying here, he's referencing that just like he did this in the Old Testament. You've got to look to me to be saved. So friends, we just have to believe this is the work of God. The work that remains and if we really believe our life will be changed radically that day back in 1988 when I understood what it meant to be born again my life was radically changed I threw out all my secular music y'all and I just started listening to family radio and this girl who liked classic rock music suddenly was just listening to hymns because that's all I, I knew at first and then I learned about contemporary music and I was like, you know, contemporary Christian music. Wow, <laughs> a whole world changed. But God is in the business of saving. Praise God. But it can't be our way. And he reaches across every single division that man makes. So first we have this religious Jew, this leader who comes to him. And next we have a Samaritan woman. As we abide, Christ accomplishes these works in us. But from Nick to the Samaritan woman in John 4, Jesus reveals that the love of God does not look at the outside, but the inside, the condition of our heart. I have a podcast episode dropping this Wednesday, continuing the topic of prejudice, that I thought I would share an excerpt from, since it is from the same pages, pages of scripture that we happen to be reading today. The Samaritans occupied the country formerly belonging to the tribe of Ephraim and the half-tribe of Manasseh. When the ten tribes were carried away into captivity to Assyria, the king of Assyria sent people to inhabit Samaria. Here's where we get the Samaritans from. This is 2 Kings 17.24, Ezra 4, verses 2 through 11. These foreigners intermarried. Uh-oh, we got some intermarrying going on, y'all with the Israelite population that was still in and around Samaria. Because the Israelite inhabitants of Samaria had intermarried with the foreigners and adopted their idolatrous religion, Samaritans were generally considered half-breeds and were universally despised by the Jews. In 1 John, I'm sorry, in John 4, verse 9, it says, The Samaritan woman said to them, How is it that you, a Jew, you, a Jew, Ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. The Samaritan woman was an outcast and looked down upon by her own people. She came alone to draw water from the community well, when during biblical times drawing water and chatting at the well was the social high point of a woman's day. However, this woman was ostracized and marked as immoral an unmarried woman living openly with the sixth in a series of men. She was shamed by others, but not shamed by Jesus. Jesus was the only one who could, in fact, truly judge her, and he chose not to. Jesus' disciples even thought it was odd that Jesus would be talking to a woman and a Samaritan at that. As it says in John 4, verse 27, just then his disciples came back, they marveled that he was talking with a woman. It was not just where she was from, it was the fact that she was also a woman that caused the disciples to shame her in their own mind. Jesus patiently shared about what true worship is in John 4, verses 22 through 24. It says, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come, right now, when the true worshipers, ugh, worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and His worshipers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. Wow. Yeah, the scripture of the day is from John 3, uh, from a little bit earlier what I was reading, but now we're going to be in the NLT translation, verses 18 through 21. There's no judgment against anyone, anyone who believes in him. But anyone, again, this is all, right, who does not believe in him 
has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people love the darkness more than they love the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear that their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. Friends, when I consider that God could have left me in darkness and he didn't, it makes me want to weep. We encounter many different people coming to know Jesus, right, in our reading today. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just so thankful for salvation. Do you know anyone who doesn't know Jesus today? It can be a stumbling block. People don't come to know God because they think they can earn their salvation in their own strength. They can't. We need Jesus, and he made a way. There's no reason why we have to be stay unsaved. Oh, goodness. So... We encounter many different people. There's Nick, the Pharisee, who had believed that righteousness was by works. Any of you believe that? That if you are good enough, you'll get to heaven? Sorry, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> and Jesus told Nicodemus, no, you must be born again. He invited him to trust in Jesus, not in himself. Then there's a Samaritan woman who had believed in the religion handed down to her. Jesus invited her into a relationship, not religion, so she could know the one she believed in. Then there was the official at the end of John 4, who Jesus performed the second sign and healed his son. He believed because of the sign Jesus did. I think sometimes people don't come to Jesus because Jesus didn't do what they wanted him to do in their life. They didn't want to suffer in this life. They didn't want some of the hardship. But Jesus is inviting us to, to be, he wants to be our comfort. He wants us to be saved. So how do you come today? Do you come as someone who thinks you could be good enough? Like Nicodemus, do you come like the Samaritan woman who you had this religion that you grew up in? God wants you to know him. What will it take to make you believe? For me, God revealed himself through his word. I could not see until he opened my eyes to see. I first turned down the thought of being born again. That just sounded too weird. <laughs> and, and then I thought it was kind of fanatical too. But God, he reached me through radio, which is interesting because then his calling was for me to be on the radio to write music. God takes the weak things, which I was weak, and he chose me, and he wants to choose you. If you don't know Jesus right now, you can know him. And if, if you know him, tell it from the mountaintops, friends, how people can know Jesus. Right now, the harvest is ripe. We've got to be telling people that they've got to be saved. This is not a game. It's not about being popular. We have to tell people about the good news. The good news. So what is your story? I'd love to hear it. How did you come to know Jesus? What was it that finally opened your eyes to see your need? We all must be born again. Don't let words that sound different to you, like born again, keep you from knowing Jesus. Don't let anyone keep you from Jesus. Our inner intellect can be a stumbling block. Our culture can be a stumbling block. The pain we go through in this life can be a stumbling block, but Jesus makes a way. His salvation reaches to everyone. There is no difference between male and female or race, anything on the outside that man looks at. God is calling us all. Will we answer? People get offended by the gospel, friends. I know, it's hard. You know what, you're gonna stick your head out there and tell someone they need to be saved and they're gonna tell you to back right on out. <laughs> it's okay. You know what, I think of Ezekiel. If we don't share the good news, the blood is on our head. We've been, we know, we who know the truth have got to share the truth so others can also be saved. People want to save themselves, and they can't, but Jesus can. 
Amen. You guys, sorry I got a little emotional on you today, but when I considered, and I'm not going to go there again because I might cry again, if I had remained in darkness, my kids wouldn't be saved as they are today. Think about that. Where would your life be had you not met Jesus? You guys, thanks for being in God's Word with me today. Such a joy, such a joy to be with you in His Word. Go with God, and Lord willing, we'll catch you tomorrow.